but in general, we don't have representatives of the school, boosters, if you like, whether they're young boosters or old boosters. Uh, we don't let boosters interfere in the recruiting <coughs> process. It's a bad policy to do so. I don't remember the specific case you're, you're talking about. Um, but, so how is that any different than just some of his friends from home telling him, hey, I hear uh, and that, Florida's new coach is really I, good or whatever? Yeah, I think the case you described was a concerted effort outside his uh, understandably reasonable yeah. friends. It was boosters of one school trying to act on behalf of that school to attract a player, and that's what we don't permit. Um, once we go down that line and start permitting people from other schools to um, use Facebook, use other means, uh, then, then we get into this uh, a gray area in, in which players are being unduly influenced. some gray area here, and that's part of the difficulty of these issues, and again, I don't know the particular case you're talking about, and it's, it's when you push outside the gray area into a, really a representing the school and trying to be a booster and influence the decision of a player, um, not because he happens to live next door to you, but because uh, you want him to come to your school to play. That's where we, we think we're going down the line to get in trouble. But, but, but you asked a great question. If I just add on to what Dr. Brand, because the question is, how do you control that? Okay, as an institutional person, you asked a great question. I am familiar with that. Is the issue is, is all of a sudden in, in the Facebook day and age and the technology, the good and the bad, the challenges and the opportunities, as an institutional representative, right, knowing that that's a violation of NCAA rule, what you're talking about right there, right, that that's something that we would have to address. You, you, you raised a great point because in today's day and age, how do you control that? And that's something that's a challenge, you know, again, for all of us in today, it's just moving so fast and there's so many things going on. And something I know that all of us are trying to be a little bit more reactive to and a little bit more accommodating in this new day and age. Well, it also speaks to the cultural sensitivities and how they're changing. And it's not just fans, younger fans, but it's also younger athletes who aren't as um, sensitized to the issues of privacy in a world where they're on Sports Center um, all the time. Um, they, they see the logos on their jerseys. Um, they see real, you know, true celebrities, professionals, pictures plastic. Pictures. Somebody's trying to tell me something. Um, <laughs> pictures plastic, plastered everywhere. So they don't see anything wrong with it. They're, they're desensitized yeah. to it. So I'm sure it's a, it's a huge challenge. And you know, I, I was curious for Dr. Brandon, Mike, how you've. There have always been issues with trying to control people whose actions affect you, but who you have no control over their actions. I mean, you, I've heard a D1 football coach complain that you know he wished the boosters would stop, you know, going after players because they end up buying the wrong ones anyway. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I, 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 but I'm, I'm, I'm curious how that's different now than it used to be. When, when you, if the technology has made that either harder or easier to control, or I mean, like, how do you go about trying to police everybody? Make sure people know that while you think you're helping, you're really, you're really hurting us. Well, I, I, think, I, th I think Sonia re made a good point earlier, too, and that's where you have to be able to take technology and maybe use it to your advantage. Do as much as you can possibly do to continue to try to reach as many people as you possibly can about the things that we're trying to do what our, what our limitations are, whatever, and that's at least for, for what us, we, we've tried to do. Um, you know, it, it's funny, when we talked about being responsive, and I mentioned three of the people that I work with that are in the back row back here, it's the same thing as far as from an educational standpoint. I'm not smart enough, personally, to figure all that out, and, and I, I also don't have the time to do all that myself. So the thing is, you have to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people that do have a much more understanding of today's day and age, Technology advantages that you can utilize that to your advantage, and the best possible methods that you can use from from a trueness standpoint to try to educate your people in the appropriate way. 